Greetings, survivors and friends. Shadow Frax here, bringing you once again all your essential knowledge nuggets. And as the whole of Rust was just forcibly wiped, this will be a roundup of what your experience might now include. Not only, but also some curious works in progress. But first, if you haven't yet, I'd love it if you subscribed. I really would. No, I mean that. So what's new? Well, the Halloween stuff is out and desert bases are in. Huzzah! For less places to build. There are four different templates, but the fillings are fully modular and procedurally generated, so the layouts will differ from map to map and wipe to wipe. You'll find a number of points of entry to each one, there's a bit of loot and oil to collect, but let's be honest, there's one overriding reason why players will be coming here, and it's not to meet scientists, of which you'll find a few loitering about. Rockety McRocket Face has now landed with a thud probably why its treads are knackered, but there's no need to move it, move it, as it can reach the whole island anyway, apart from safe zones, because they're safe. And here's how you use it. First, find some MLRS rockets in a single-use aiming module. You'll find the modules in locked hackable crates and the rockets in elite, Bradley and attack heli crates. You then put up to 12 rockets in the back, slap the module in the dashboard to activate its systems, and the island now becomes the shellfish of your choice. Click and drag the dashboard map to choose a target with the red crosshair, and if you've already placed a pin somewhere, you'll see this too, which helps deliver things right where they're needed. When you're happy with your choice, mash the big red button with your fist and think about what a lovely surprise someone's about to get. Some notes. There is a bit of randomness as to where the rockets will hit, but they should all land inside the red circle somewhere. There is also a white circle that will trail behind for a bit whilst the aim is moving into position, and if this doesn't end up in the same place, then it means an obstacle's in the way. You can also use weapons from the cockpit when seated, just in case. Oh, and the whole thing will break down for 10 minutes each time it's fired to prevent consta smiting. I think I just made a new word. As for damage, I did some tests, and here were the results on different tiers. So, yeah, basically, you can not only offline raid now, but do at least a scattershot bit of it from a distance. No guarantees, though, and as for defense against these attacks, Uncle Sam's sight is your best friend, with ideally three of them needed to successfully fend off a full 12 rockets. This is all still subject to change, of course, depending on how it gets used and abused over the next few weeks, so watch this space. Quite a few more quality of life improvements were made this month, including undo and redo support in the sign painting UI, being able to gesture whilst crouching, being able to search through all vending machines on the map for a specific item when in the marketplace, a number of new projectile metrics being added to the combat log, such as how many previous objects a projectile has hit, how much its maximum damage it did, how long it travelled for, and how much of a mismatch there was between its trajectory on the client and server. You can now loot items in the campervan storage whilst it's on a lift, and dung production from horses was reduced again, although they're not quite as constipated as they were a while back. On a scale from Imodium to Senecot, I believe they're at about a five now. Talking of which, did you hear they fixed the Entite typo on the water pump? Oh yes, that was quite quick of them. I'm still a bit bothered though. Oh, why is that? Well, I was hanging out with some of the other horses and I noticed one of them was called a Bucksin. I mean, what's one of those? <sighs> Some kind of naughty horse? Probably. He did poo in the food trough. What else do I have to tell you today? Well, there's a BP wipe coming on December the 2nd with next month's patch. That's nice, dear. And the team are doing a few things in works in progress, apparently. A bit of work being done on the Water 5 final branch. A commit relating to a brick building popped up. No context to that, I'm afraid, but it's interesting. A couple of commits about a snowmobile. What? Okay. A few missing world models are being created for items such as key locks, large medkits, and tuna and bean cans. And lastly, just recently, these items were surreptitiously injected into the game files, a couple of bank vault prefabs. Seemingly just basic Unity assets, but what's the plan with these? Let me know what you think down below. Okay, you're up to date. Leave me a like and subscribe to the channel. Come join me on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Meta, whatever it's called, Discord, and my Steam group. I shall catch you all soon, of course, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Jerry. This video is powered by AWDIT's producer range of workstation PCs, available now at awdit.co.uk. First, find some MLRs. First, find some ML. You'll find the modules in locked habitat. <laughs>